Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, our home was claimed. One life, one world. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. Hello, welcome, or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, music, stuff like that, then you should subscribe because that's what we do here. Also, don't forget to like this video because that super helps us out. Oh, there she is. I was like, where could she possibly go? This place is not very large. <laughs> not many places to go around this place. Ah, uh, let me guess, it's time to leave, isn't it? My apologies for disappearing again. If it is any consolation, I have already packed my things. How is he? Brother, Commander Blodin, something tells me that you are not solely here out of concern for his welfare. But to answer your question, there has been no change. He will not speak or eat. I'm not even sure if he slept. If he did, he seems none the better for it. He just shuffles about with that same expression on his face. Oh. You will look after him, uh, won't you, Commander? And treat him with every kindness? He's still in there. I know it. Beneath the anguish and the despair, he's still fighting with all his heart. He deserves to be given that chance, until he comes back to us, until we know for certain what has become of him. Aye, aye, you needn't worry. If he hadn't risked his neck to warn us and help you secure the better part of the crystals, this could have turned out a damn worse, sight worse than it did. We'll soon forget that. Not soon forget that. And nor will Maelstrom command. I'm so sorry, Gabu. I truly am. You should never have been made to... And I know I cannot possibly understand. Mayhap there is nothing I can do or say. The pain, the anger, the helplessness. Hold fast to the memories of better times. Remember them as they were. And when it hurts so much your heart feels fit to burst, let it burst. Let it burst and fill up again with your love for them. And never ever forget. I'm entering a sadness spiral. Come along, little one. I I will remember them. And you, Alice. Thank you. Oh, he talks. That's so good. Have faith, sister. Your words have reached him. In time he will recover. And those who orchestrated these events will be made to answer for their crimes. A thousand times over, I. There will be a reckoning. Reckoning. Oh, hello. We have heard the glad tidings from Ogamoro, my friends. By the grace of the Twelve and your most valiant efforts, the people of Lipsalim and Sunday rest easy. I should like to think so, yes. Though we failed to prevent the Lord of Crags from manifesting, we did succeed in weakening him, enabling our friend to dispatch him before the Warriors of Darkness could make matters worse. It was by no means an unmitigated success, but it will have to suffice. Then let us speak of another matter, one which weigheth heavy on my lady's mind. As thou didst request, I sought out the Grun Oracles, that we might better understand the aims of the Warriors of Darkness. Though their copious use of allegory defieth any single interpretation, the oracles paint a most disturbing picture, one of worlds parallel to our own, a part yet linked, reduced to ruin with every umbral, umbral calamity. Seven times have they succeeded, that of ten and three only six worlds remain. Aye, all is as my lady Monphilia spake unto thee. Speak. As for what becometh of these reflections when they and the source are rejoined, frail flesh undone in umbral 
fires. Each soul surrenders it to her call to flow into the endless sea, there to adore as one and none. Then, then if the warriors of darkness succeed, everyone in their world will die. In essence, I... The verse speaketh of the renunciation of the flesh and subsequent return to the life stream. However, this fate may yet be preferable to the alternative, for if the first were to fail to transcend it, fail to transcend it, light, fall to transcend it, light, that makes more sense. In the manner of the warriors of darkness described, it would go away. It would go away. I cannot read. I just can't read. It would give way unto a void where none may know either life or death. Far better to die, they reason, for in death there is life. The essence of a soul which returneth unto the source may be born anew, saved. Such, at least, is their belief, I surmise. Reading is hard. If that is true, then, gods, no one should ever have to make such a choice. Ere we speak further on this subject, I would share with thee another recent discovery. It would seem that several sizable shipments of crystals have been delivered into the hands of certain Alamegan parties. Alamegans? Strange. And you believe this to be the work of the same Ishgardian smugglers who supplied the beast tribes? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Unless though thou wonder at their motive, I would remind you that the Axians did once attempt to bring about the summoning of Ralgar. The individuals who took your seat of these shipments are refugees belonging to a group devoted to the cause of Alamegan liberation. It may also interest thee to know that their Ishgardian suppliers appear to be none other than the remnants of Eli Rowell's network of spies. Surely you jest, and yet... It is not so surprising. Bereft of leadership and haunted by the Alliance, I can well imagine such villains being desperate enough to conspire with the Asians, assuming they even know, or care, who their new employers are. All of which is irrelevant. Forgive me. We must seek out the Resistance group which received the crystals without delay. Burr, Alizé, will you come with me to Little Alamigo? Little Alamigo. Yes, of course. I should like to hear what they have to say for themselves for sand. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Alfredo, Alze, Burr, are you three listening? Good, I have tidings. The Temple Knights raided the smuggler's warehouse less than an hour ago. A cursory interrogation of the prisoners yielded confirmation that they were in the umplea of, and I hope you are sitting down, a man in black robes. Then you have them, and the crystals too. What few remained, I... Regrettably, it would seem they dispatched one final shipment in the hours before we struck. It was bound for Little Alamigo, we are told, where it will be received by members of a local resistance group. Since Sir Emmerich's men no longer have need of my services, I have a mind to head that way. As do we, by happy coincidence. We learned of the shipments but a few moments ago. Ha! And there I was thinking I might finally be one step ahead of the warrior of light and her little helpers. Ah, wait a moment. There is more, and I defy you not to be surprised by this revelation. <laughs> the leader of the Ishgardian smugglers was formerly in the empire of one Eli Rely. Well, I can't say that name. No, thanks. <laughs> the infamous Ivy herself. Once again, the grid, I fear I must inform you that. The grid, with whom else have you shared this information? About the smugglers? No one. As I think I mentioned, the raid was less than an hour ago. I was planning to contact you Shola next, but is there someone else you would have me notify first? No, there isn't. Uh-oh. What in the world has gotten into her? It is twice now that we have sought Arialge's aid, and twice she has treated him as if he were a stranger. <laughs> the Archon was one of Grandfather's most dedicated pupils, and spent as much time at the Lavalier estate as we did. He's practically a member of the family. Truth be told, I struggled to recall a day from my childhood when I did not see the three of them laughing together. If this continues, I may have to raise the matter. Later, though, little Alamigo awaits. So many secrets. 
I will get to the bottom of this. Oh, forgive me. I was... It has been a long day. Did you have something to say? Uriel... Uriel J. Oh, I... I've always struggled to understand what's going on in his head. Now more than ever. Listen, Burr. If anything should happen, it should be me who... Just know that I am prepared to do what must be done. Right then. To more pressing matters. Since we have no idea when the grid might arrive, I suggest we see what information we can gather in his absence. So, to review. We are reliably informed that members of the Alamegan resistance operating here have taken receipt of several large shipments of crystals, our task being to ascertain who and why. Given the size of this settlement, I find it hard to believe that anyone here could be wholly unaware of the resistance movements. The challenge, of course, will be finding individuals who are both able and willing to share such information with outsiders. It would seem sensible to divide our forces. Burr, why don't you question the residents of the eastern half of town? Alize and I will do the same in the west, and afterwards we can rendezvous here to share our findings. Chair gag. <laughs> don't mind her, it's not that she hates you, she hates everyone. That's funny. Ah, let me guess, come to join the fight, have you? No need to deny it, friend, you're not the first to answer the Griffin's call. While he's lit a fire in every Alamegan's heart, he's also inspired more than a few old odds to pledge themselves to the cause. And little wonder, the Garleans won't stop until we're all under the yoke. Nope, thank you, though. I see you there, going around asking questions, looking for the griffin and his lad, I'll bet. Seems they're the talk of little Alamigo these days. Folk wondering what he's about, what he's got in store for the Garleans, and what's under that mask of his, of course. Some say he's hardly got a face, what with all the scars. Others reckon he's been marked for death by the Empire, and that they'd send a bloody legion if they knew he was here. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Hey, the Resistance? Damned if I know. It's not as if I'd be any use to him. <laughs> oh no, he's sick. If you set storm by all these tales of secret weapons, good luck to you. But I'm too old for the masks and bedtime stories. This is our lot, and it's time we got used to it. Oh, don't give up. Oh, confront the problem. Fight. Win. I suppose I should ask what you learned, but I think I already know. This griffin seems to be the leader of a newly formed faction within the sea, the resistance, the masks. Yet, despite their growing popularity, no one seems to know much about them. Only that they are the most aggressively militant group to join the movement in recent memory. Indeed, many claim their commitment to the cause of Alamegan liberation is unrivaled. We can, we can but hope the revolutionary fervor is never channeled in the direction of a rival. Though I feel confident that this is the group which received the crystal shipments, we yet lack proof. Before taking any action, I would speak with the settlement's leader to confirm my suspicions, and may happen list his help while I am about it. Given that you and Gundabald are already acquainted, mayhap it would be best if you took the lead, shall we? I guess so. Much as it pleases me to see you again, Bear, I cannot help but wonder if I should be worried. I hear you and yours have been asking questions. The Griffin, I, I know of him, as do we all. He and his masks have become a leading faction within the Resistance. Though there was suspicion at first given his secretive ways, he quickly proved himself a charismatic and capable commander. Men are drawn to his passion and his vision. They truly believe that he has what it takes to lead them to victory. Even I cannot help but admire the man for what he's accomplished, but I have not forgotten Wilred. I was blind to the danger of his ambitions. And you are not. The Griffin will soon deliver a speech to our people at the sunken temple of Karn. Go and see him with your own eyes. Weigh his words with your own heart. How convenient. Tis but a pity Thancred is not here to join us. You two go on ahead. I shall stay behind and wait for him. Mm. I even brought a chair. Has it begun already? I hear voices coming from within.
Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Garlean Empire. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Okay, I'm sorry, but all I can think is juicers. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I... We abandoned them. Our own flesh and blood. To labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out. Building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. We abandoned them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country. Or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandoned them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Garleans pass to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, but a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Eorzean Alliance will do not to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us. And they have murdered us. But no more! Blood demands blood, and the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it, and together we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gear Arbania once more! A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Wait, is that... doing here? My friend. I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart. That's so exciting, we found them. Yay! <laughs> Words cannot express how glad I am to see both you both alive and well. And you, though it was pretty obvious you and Burr would be fine. The Crystal Braves never had a realistic chance of capturing any of the Scions, divided as they were and distrusted by the better part of Eorzea. But if you truly believe that, forgive me, what exactly have you two been doing all this time? Repaying a favor. After the banquet, we had no choice but to flee Ulda 
and we would not have been able to do so without the aid of some old friends from the Resistance. That's right. They smuggled us out of the city and sheltered us in Little Alamigo, all at risk, great risk to themselves. Obviously, we couldn't let that go unacknowledged, so we offered to help them out with their operations for a while. When we learned of the Scion's exoneration, that Lolo Rito had severed all ties with the Crystal Braves, that General Robin Raman had been reinstated, we resolved to make contact, but having long since discarded our Lake Pearls as a precautionary measure, our options were rather limited. To make matters more complicated, we are embroiled in a delicate operation at the time, leaving me with little choice but to entrust a letter to a courier. I gather from your puzzled expressions, however, that you never received it. What kind of courier did you use? <laughs> to be honest, we thought this might happen. While the masks are happy to let the refugees spread the word within the community, they're pretty strict about communicating with outsiders. Oh. And we also heard a rumor that the Griffin doesn't want us meddling in his affairs. The Griffin mistrusts the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Curious. It is well known that we are no friends to Garlemald. One would think the man we saw beseeching all and sundry to join his cause would welcome our support. Ah, I should say that the man you saw was not in fact the Griffin, but an impersonator. And a talented rabble-rouser to boot. <laughs> It would not surprise me if he were responsible for the majority of these public appearances. As you may have gathered, the Griffin is an extremely cautious and distrusting man who has made every effort to conceal his identity. Even when we participated in a raid under his direct command, we were not permitted to approach him. It's hard to know what to make of it all. The secrecy, the impersonators, the masks. What? It's not as if I'm making all of you wear one, and mine only covers half my face. It's completely different. Anyway, when we heard the Griffin was due to give a speech, we thought it might be a good opportunity to get a better sense of the man behind the, uh... To get a better sense of the man. For all the good it did. And now you've heard the whole of it. But tell me, what prompted you to take an interest in the Griffin? Somebody, you're not serious. I can't believe it. The Resistance would never enter even entertain such a ridiculous plan, but the Griffin, well, the man is an enigma, I cannot say with any confidence what he would or would not do. What I can say, however, is that the speech we heard today was not the first to make a reference to a power capable of defeating the Empire. The masks have made many such claims of late. I confess I had assumed it to be mere bluster, but in the context of the shipments of which you spoke, it is not impossible that they are alluding to a primal. Whatever it is, we'll find out together, and if anyone tries to stop us, they'll answer to me. Indeed. That is, assuming you'll have us. The team's coming back together. We're putting the band back together. If, as you suspect, the Griffin is indeed plotting to summon a primal, we must needs obtain confirmation while there is yet time to act. To that end, I propose we question his double. Given his role at the group's de facto mouthpiece, I should not be surprised if he were one of the Griffin's closest associates, and while he may not be aware of the most sensitive details, he could probably tell us the mask's plans in broad strokes. Like the man whom he impersonates, however, he is wary of outsiders. He will not expose himself without a suitable incentive. My plan is as follows. You and Alfano oppose as adventurers fallen on hard times, inspired by his words to take up arms for a noble cause. Ida and I, as members of the Resistance, will recount tales of your past achievements and testify as to your usefulness in the struggles ahead. With our enthusiastic assur assurances still ringing in his ears, he will decide to welcome you in person, and we will arrange a meeting. What could possibly go wrong? You will need to look the part that we might maintain the charade until we have him cornered, at least. Here, this should be enough to purchase suitable garments from Telbot and to have him rub a respectable amount of dirt on them for good measure. Any questions? It all seems simple enough, thank you. 
And with that bow, let us be off. Hello, poor soul. Hey, you want to buy what? I don't know what you're up to, but I want no part of it. Shut up and take my money! Well, you're the ones with the gill, and seen as your friends of Pepper Limo. There, two naked slops for the both of you, tailored and uh, treated to your taste. Now off with you before someone sees us together. Clothes make it the man, as they say. Right then, I will go and change and see you at the spot Papa Limo marked on our maps. Uh, I look great. Um. Uh, oh, look at him, he looks so cute. Well, look at us. A pair of down at heel adventurers seeking a chance to recapture past glories. Yes, this should suffice. And now we play the waiting game. Let's see if our plan works. My thanks, comrades. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided open engagements with the Garleans, but you and yours seem confident against the world in arms. I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. Why, one might even think you were planning to summon a primal. Because that would do much to explain the sizable shipment of crystals you recently received from your smuggler friends, whom our Ishgardian allies have since detained, lest you wonder. I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Got him. Ah, the famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin, but I speak with his voice, and it was at his BS that we procured those crystals. You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We used them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking! Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the resistance. Alamigo will never be free! This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honorable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? What? Aside from a lack of crystals? None. But the beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have naught to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Ida and I will find it. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the warrior of light? Who me? Could it be? Don't know who you're talking about. 
I... I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave woman can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none, courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. Alrighty then. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... Either he could see up her mask, or he could just read her lips very well. If the Griffin and his men have their way, it is only a matter of time before the situation in Alamigo comes to a head. Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done. Well, Alfie, <laughs> I feel like it's a waste that we got so dressed up. Maybe we should, like, go get a drink or something? Quarry Bill, he said. Do you remember? I really don't. <laughs> Forgive me. You cannot be expected to recall every name and face. And besides, it's not as if it matters. I have long admired how you live in the present. <laughs> how you focus on the problems at hand and always keep moving forward. So let us keep moving forward together, Burr. We must find and secure those crystals. This is no time for looking back. If we take the Griffin's double at his word, then the crystals are now somewhere within Z Zaharak, ready to be put to use by the Amalja. We must apprise Elze of all we have learned. I will join you both in Little Alamigo after I have changed. Oh, look who it is. Now that Thangrid has finally arrived, maybe you could share your latest findings? You mean to tell me that while we were worrying ourselves sick, Ida and Papalimo were here all along? Well, Estella will be relieved, and also angry. Mainly angry, I should think. As for the crystals, what choice do we have? We cannot very well leave them in the hands of the Amalra. For all we know, they could be preparing to summon Ifrit even as we speak. We must make for Zaharak without delay. Agreed. If there is naught else to discuss, let us depart at once. <gasps> Who's watching us now? And so they go forth in accordance with the Griffin's plan. Da -da -da. Players gather to assume their marks on a stage wreathed in flame. Ere long, the curtain shall rise, and the drama of which I am author, Gods Forgive Me, shall at last be performed. No else remaineth, save to stand at the ready and pray that the chance is seized, for never shall we know its like again. Oh, shiny. I confess, I expected a warmer greeting. But we must not jump to conclusions, not until we have braved the bowl of embers. We must be ready to engage the enemy at any moment. If you would make any final preparations, pray do so now. I shall await your signal. Well. This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. Ah, the saviors of Eorzea. 
slow as ever. Where does this guy get off? So rude. By the twelve, will you never learn? You know you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the warrior of light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange! Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Carbuncle! Defend me! I sense you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one, while my talents lay elsewhere. Eorzea's blade of light once stood by my side, now I shall stand at hers and defend this realm with all my might. This is so intense. Ah. Let's finish this. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I am not ready. A few moments later. You guys done now? Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <sighs> we are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? No, but now that you mention it... Crystals? You mean, like the Assians? Just so. As the Assians flee under the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. <sighs> Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Assians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. <laughs> Wait! Such methods as the Assians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... You would have had to... A 
At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. That's sad. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. Oh. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought, until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us and still, still it came to this. You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction and now we must save it. <clears throat> I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. This is so sad. And also, like, is this gonna happen to us, though? Just bruised, not broken. <laughs> no matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind. Oh. Dad. To have known the depths of sorrow and embraced the highest sacrifice, nonetheless, Master Louis Soir, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. 
Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save. Who I can yet save. Minfilia! Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world, and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this fast no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. Thank you, Uriange, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Hydaelyn had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes, in whom I glimpsed ourselves. The first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labor to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this not to save her, but to send her away? One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me and our gifts to them, forming a bond which transcends time and space.
Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side. Watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tupsimati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. Would seem the power of our crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done. Hear me, servant of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. Aww. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this. As one fool to another. Light. Dark. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it. So please. Forge a different path. Seize a better fate. strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor. Bad day of dead. <laughs> Thank you for me. For everything. See, we are in southern Thetalan again. Mithili is doing, no doubt. May the Twelve speed her on her way, and the Warriors of Darkness, too. I cannot help but wonder what awaits those wayward souls. If they gave their lives in order to travel through the Source, then in returning to the First, would they not? But mayhap that was their wish. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help 
gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you, <laughs> bye.